Hello everybody, welcome to Break and Remake. I'm your host Joan. Today I'm going to show you how to do this. I'm going to show you how to take a shirt that you thrifted and turn it into a dress using a shower curtain. It just so happens to be a shower curtain. You don't have to use a shower curtain. You can use whatever fabric you want. <laughs> Let me show you how to do it. This is the shirt that I'm going to turn into a dress. It looks okay. It's pretty cute on its own, but it's a little too short for what I like to wear. And I think it's a little plain. It needs something magical done to it, right? First things first, you have to find your waistline. So what I did is I tied a ribbon around my waist and I had my friend pin into it. It's really simple you get to pick where your waistline is but make sure you have a friend pin you because as you bend over you will change your ribbon position and it just turns into a nightmare just have a friend do it I also want the neckline to be a V the neckline's cute as a boat neck but it as I move it tends to like pooch out and I don't like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make it a v-neck. What we're going to do next is we're going to take this off the mannequin or you know off of yourself and then we're going to mark the waistline on the inside and see how level our marks are and sort of even them out. The back and the front are going to be two different heights so my front is going to be a little higher because I have a belly and then my back is just going to be like what my back is. So it's going to be a little bit at an angle like this. I've got my shirt all inside out. I have my pins so I can see them. I'm just gonna start drawing lines on the pins so I can see about where they hit on the shirt and sort of even them out. You can see some are higher than the others, but I just wanna get a vague idea about where these are and then I can go ahead and Oh, I'm running out of chalk. Um, I can then go ahead and even them out as I see fit. My mentor always gets after me for not ironing stuff. I ironed this. I ironed it. It's ironed. It's just still wrinkly. Once your marks are in, you can start taking out your safety pins um, so they're not in your way while you try to draw a nice flat even line. I've got everything laid out as best I can and you want to make it as flat as possible. The front's going to be bigger than the back um, on the garment just because we're 3D. Just try to make it as flat as possible when you do this um, and you'll be just fine. I've got my line drawn across Across the front I'm measuring the side seams to kind of see where I need to adjust my line what I need to do to kind of zhuzh it out here's my line and then I measured the side seam to just make sure that I'm doing okay this is seven and a quarter the other side was not quite it was like just seven so I raised the line and I redrew this to kind of match it up I'm gonna go ahead and flip the garment over and do the same thing on the back that's it I went ahead and I carried carried the marks over to the back from the front so I could easily line everything up um, where it goes. Now I'm ready to cut, but let me show you to see if this is fairly even Stevens or if it's higher in the front and lower in the back like I was kind of thinking. It totally is higher in the front and lower in the back. Because we are three-dimensional, there will be variations from front to back and side to side, it's totally fine. You're not doing it wrong. You're actually, it looks, it's going to be great. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this line. That's my waistline. I'm going to add my seam allowance to it. I always sew with half an inch just because I, I can do what I want. And then I'm going to just cut off the excess. When adding seam allowance, it's a great time to kind of even out your hard points and hard angles. Um, I'm just going to smooth out some of these like harder jumps between one seam and the other. I'm just going to kind of make it a little smoother, angle it a little bit more. Let me show you. This is coming in at pretty hard angle. I'm going to go ahead and smooth this out a little bit more, but kind of taking a little flat at the top here and then going into this angle. Clearly I can't record and draw at the same time. <laughs> I'm not that talented. I'm going to take my scissors. I'm going to cut in at one little place and then I'm going to cut all the way around on my seam allowance line. That way I have a seam allowance to sew things together. Woo! I got my shorty shirt all cut out now. It's going to be easier to manipulate the neckline now while it's flat and well, while it doesn't have a big old skirt attached to it. So I think I'm going to go ahead and draw my lines, 
add my seam allowance for the neck and then I'm just gonna do a little turn and turn hem at the neckline um, and not continue this weird white piping. Everything's all marked with my half inch seam allowance. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and cut this part out. I get a little too excited and I think my whatever's in my head is gonna work out, but um, sometimes it just doesn't. I'm gonna press this, see how it looks after I do this, but I think I'm just gonna bias bind this edge because it's a little weird looking. It happens, especially to me, because <laughs> I'm just like, get it done. I'm going to set this bad boy off to the side and we're going to get the skirt part ready. The skirt part is super cute. If you were following me on Instagram at Brick and Remake, um, you saw this already. It's a cute shower curtain that my friend thrifted for me. She's like, this has a crazy print, you'll love it. And I do. Um, it's perfect for this situation. I am going to keep this super simple. I think I'm just going to cut this in half um, hot dog style um, and then I'm going to sew up the side seams together and then I'll have a big long length to then gather up into the waist of my new dress. If you have done my easiest DIY um, rectangle skirt um, tutorial, I'll put a link for it up here, it'll pop up, um, you will know that whatever the measurement of this is, we want double that to gather into our fun skirt. I'm gonna measure this and then measure what we have. I think we're gonna have way too much to go into the skirt, but maybe I'll be okay with that. This circle is 54 inches. So we want double that to gather into this um, circle. Oh yeah, okay, so this is 73 inches double, that would be um, math. And uh, so then I feel comfortable putting all of that into, uh, into the waist of this. Yeah, yeah. So this is 70, so it's 73. What's that doubled? Ooh, my, ta <laughs> my tape's not long enough, so I'm gonna do real math. It's 70, 146. Oh, 146, I did it in my brain. I'm just gonna go for it. Who ever complained about too full of a skirt? Not me. When doing a gathering stitch, it's super important to do two rows of stitches to control your gathers um, because otherwise uh, one pops and then you have to start all over again. I do not want to have to start over with this much fabric. <laughs> It doesn't matter what color you do your gathering stitch in, you can pull them out when you're done. Gathering stitch, you have to increase your stitch length to like six. Oh, I have five, five. I do the first row of stitches close to the edge, the top edge of the fabric. Um, and then when I do my second row of stitches, I'll go, I'll go below that. Uh, one needs to be inside of your seam allowance and one needs to be outside. Um, that way where you stitch is controlled. I'm all done with my stitches. Now I'm going to go ahead and pull my threads to make my gathers. You have to hold your threads and then gently smoosh the fabric along. I'm gonna go one side around and then I'm gonna start here and then go around this way um, just so I don't have to go one direction and put that much strain on my um, threads. My ultimate goal for this is to make this the size of my waist. Just doing a preliminary holdy uppy. It looks like I can loosen because I've got this little hang off here. I went ahead and I pin marked my center fronts and center backs on both the bodice and the skirt. And now I'm going to put them together, right sides together and pin it out so I can start putting it together. I'm gonna go ahead and loosen it up. It is a little gappy. I'm gonna loosen it up, kind of even stevens them out and we are in business. Make sure your gathers are pretty even. You don't want a clump of gathers anywhere. I'm all done pinning. Now we can sew it. I kind of punked myself. I pinned on the inside. So I just to make sure that the ruffles are all downwards as I sew them. Okay partial reveal. I'm going to fix the neckline and then um, we'll take some glamour shots. So this is the final look. Um, I decided to put a big butterfly patch on because I had it and I needed to put it on here clearly. I'm also thinking about splattering some metallic paint on here. Let me know in the comments 
if you think I should do it and then I'll show you guys on Instagram if, if I do it. Let me know if you'd like more specific tutorials. Like if I use um, jargon or if I do something you just don't quite understand, let me know in the comments and I will do a tutorial just on that subject. I was thinking about covering ruffles and the different type of ruffles you could do, but let me know. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more sustainable DIYs. We'll see you next time. Bye. The pins are gonna like disappear and then you're gonna be like, where is everything? Ah.